as we've talked about this, it's Palm Sunday, and we've, you know, Jillian so, so rightfully talked and pointed to hope. Uh, you, you've got a great way of looking at the Holy Week, looking at Palm Sunday today. You know, the Pope will be celebrating Mass at the Vatican alone. A lot of us will be doing it alone ourselves. What are you thinking about? Well, it is a message of hope, and you're right. I've been talking about it all morning because Jesus rode in to Jerusalem knowing what was coming, death, but yet he conquered it. The Pope in St. Peter's Basilica earlier this morning was giving his message in it. He said, because I've been following that Mass a little bit, haven't been recently uh, into the Catholic Church, he said the Father upheld Jesus in his service. He did not take away the evil, but rather strengthened him in his suffering so he could conquer it. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a time that we have to strengthen in our suffering because everyone is suffering, but there is hope, and that is the message of the beginning of Holy Week. Absolutely, and you know, you talk about hope, you talk about the hope that we have for our country, you talk about the, the hope that we have for our medical workers, that they can you know, continue to get through this, that they can stay positive, that they can mentally stay healthy because they're dealing with so much right now. And to be fair, I did take that message of hope, Pete, from Griff, so Griff is the first <laughs> one that started talking about hope this morning, but it's a message that we all need to remember today, today of all days, but you know, especially today as we continue on, what you hear the president say is going to be a very tough week. Yeah. Um, you know, keep that in mind as we go into this week. These, it's not going to be easy. Totally right. These moments humble us as to the fragile nature of human nature. Um, and Jesus on the cross, hum, you know, also gives us hope that in the darkest of days, we can get, move past it. Our leaders are talking about the dark days coming. And the hope is that together with a resilient spirit, with faith in God and Jesus and this Easter season, uh, we can move into another, a, a, another phase mm -hmm. of life in America. The and president talked about it yesterday. He talked about how different this is going to be. Uh, it's not going to be a regular church service, and he certainly acknowledged that. Watch. Palm Sunday, tomorrow. Think of it. We're not going to churches on Palm Sunday. But think of next Sunday, Easter. But Easter Sunday, Palm Sunday, I'm going to be watching tomorrow live from Riverside, California, great church. But I'm going to be watching on a computer, right? On a laptop. I think on Easter, maybe I'll be watching from a laptop as opposed. So how sad is it that we have Easter Palm and Easter Sunday, and people are watching on laptops and computers. It's sad. But the job that this whole country has done is amazing. And then, guys, to add to that, here's a tweet from Ohio Governor Mike DeWine with a picture, and it says, quote, Tomorrow is Palm Sunday. In the Christian tradition, it marks the triumphal entrance of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. It begins Holy Week. It's going to be a different Palm Sunday because we cannot gather together. It is much too dangerous. And you can see that photo attached to it. I mean, you know, I said something in the last hour, and I still believe it to be true that, you know, on this day, you know, you can't gather and you can't go to services as you normally would. But you have to remember, you know, you have other ways of gathering. And I know, you know, we always say that technology, we need to limit it, but now is the time that we need to utilize it to be able to, you know, FaceTime if you can, Skype with you can, with your loved ones, and be able to share, you know, your message of hope and faith and your services, you know, with those that you normally would just from a distance. And we can still do that. Absolutely. What's reassuring about this moment is we know how the story ends. He is risen. He is risen indeed a week from today. Absolutely. Well right. said. Welcome back. Well, most of the country now under stay-at-home orders, except for nine states. Five of those have yet to declare any stay-at-home restrictions. That includes North Dakota, where our next guest says the rate of diagnosing new coronavirus cases is dropping. GOP North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer joins us now. Sir, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Well, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the inspiring message before the commercial break. Oh, of course. Thank you so much. So I'm curious. So how is it going in North Dakota? What is happening in your state that those numbers are actually dropping without that stay at home order? Well, it's called common sense. And um, and we're a compliant people that we do what we're supposed to do and what we're told to do. I might also add, it doesn't hurt to have uh, a grand total of 10 people per square mile. Uh, it's, social distancing works pretty well out here in the Dakotas and Nebraska and, and some of the other states that you're talking about. And we don't know for sure that we've reached the peak. I mean, who knows? But it's been pretty flat uh, for the last couple of weeks and actually declining a little bit in the last couple so of days. Senator so we'll see. Uh, what what is the what what's the effect been on your economy then? I mean, we're seeing the economy crater in yeah. certain parts of the country. What, what's what's it like in North Dakota? 
Well, of course, the oil and gas um, economy is struggling mightily. Yep. It is throughout our country. And um, the agriculture sector has been struggling, you know, for the last several years with low commodity prices anyway. And yet, even at that, I think we're doing pretty well. But to be honest, it's, you know, the, the emphasis, of course, getting through this pandemic. And then I think people are very optimistic about the future of our economy, but we're struggling through it right now like everybody is. Senator, the president on Thursday declared uh, or approved the, the disaster declaration for North Dakota. Yeah. And while you don't have a stay at home order now, do you envision, because we've heard the heat, the calls uh, being made from other governors, do you envision a point in time or a condition at which you believe North Dakota needs to go under a stay at home order? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, although I, I would say whether there's a, a state order or not a state order, North Dakotans are going to do what they're supposed to do and what's best for them and, and for their health, their family and their communities either way. So w whether it's an order or whether it's a guideline, I don't know that it's going to make a big difference, but I do trust Governor Doug Burgum to make those decisions, much like I trust you know, Governor Noam in South Dakota and Governor Ricketts in Nebraska. I think that they know their states, they know the situation on the ground, they're very engaged and they communicate very effectively. So. It could happen, but I, I do know that the decision's in the right hands when it's in the hands of the governors. We'll continue to follow that, for, that's for sure. Um, I want to talk about this because you met with the president and oil executives this past week. I'm curious what you can tell us from that meeting. Well, you know, it's inter interesting that there are a number of multinational uh, CEOs around the table, as well as Harold Hamm from Continental Resources, who uh, has a lot of uh, activity here in North Dakota, of course, and um, another independent and a pipeline company uh, w through Energy Transfer Partners who built the Dakota Access Pipeline with Kelsey Warren. And so it was a diverse group. And the, that diversity is reflected in the discussion. But the one thing that was, there were two really common threads. And one is the president in his recent outreach to the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, MBS, and of course, Vladimir Putin is starting to have a, a real impact uh, on, on their behavior. It's really, there's nothing we can do about the demand drop as a result of the coronavirus. But what we can do something about is, is when supposed allies like Saudi Arabia take advantage of the yeah. demand drop by increasing the supply at a time when the United States is spending a lot of money and effort and human, uh, human capital protecting their oil assets is, is uh, unconscionable. And the president's outreach to, to MBS, I think, has been very helpful. The other thing, you guys, is that to make sure that in this recovery package and whatever we're doing to, to bridge this difficult economic time, that our banking community realizes that the oil and gas industry is a major part of our economy and course, needs to huge. be assisted as well. Absolutely. Senator Kramer, thank you, thank you so much for thank your time. You. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Could thank you all.